It's coming up to 20 to 8. Genetically modifying human embryos for research has been the cause of much debate. Questions are being raised about a future which could see so-called designer babies. Today, a group of international scientists has said that it is essential the process is allowed in order to advance medical research. Joining us now is Emily Grossman, who's a genetics specialist. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, the latest thing is that uh, the scientists want a lifting on the, on the ban of genetic modification, but people are concerned when they hear genetic yeah. modification, they hear freaky things, don't they? Well, the point is we're very far from that, and that's not what the scientists and what these authorities are actually calling to be done. We don't know if we're going to be using these to make designer babies, and if we did, that would be far off in the future and, and probably not. The point is, is it's important to allow the research into the system that allows this to potentially be done in the future if we're going to open doors to eradicating genetic disease and understanding the development of human embryos. The problem is that people see the next stages, don't they? And they, they want to know that there will be... A, f a line drawn and once you open the doors yes. the scientists push and push yeah. and push. Well the UK is really good at kind of policing these kind of systems. We've got very good authorities that carefully supervise all research that's done into embryos and then potentially into human embryos and, and human, human embryo development to make sure that these things don't go down a sort of slippery slope and it would be a very long time in the future if it d did happen but it's very important that we understand these techniques that we understand the benefit of what they could do in the future and even if it's it's simply to then say, actually, no, we shouldn't be using these techniques. Somebody out there is going to be doing them if the technology is available. So we need to understand very carefully in a supervised manner how, how it works and how it could go wrong if we ch then choose to not use it. But the potential of eradicating genetic disease in the future is, is obviously very important. And also these techniques are very useful at the moment in understanding the development of human embryos. And that could be used for help with uh, uh, techniques such as IVF, pre-implantation pre to help embryos implant without actually using genetic modification, but using it as a tool to help us to understand embryo development. Can you give us a, a, a sort of basic guide? This, this procedure, is it crisp? crisp? CRISPR, CRISPR-Cas9, CRISPR. it's called. Okay. So, as I understand it, that means that you can scan DNA looking for specific things within right. it, yep. and the next step, presumably, in that is if you see something you don't want mm -hmm. or don't like, mm -hmm you can get rid. Yeah. Is, is that right? <laughs> yeah, it's exactly right. You literally chop it out. They've been described as, the system's been described as kind of molecular scissors with a sat-nav attached. So the sat-nav kind of scan, scans along the DNA and then the scissors chop exactly where the scientists decide they want to chop, which basically means that gene can effectively be knocked out. And in a slightly more sophisticated version of the technique, they could actually add in uh, a good healthy copy of a, a mutated or diseased version of the gene. So in the first instance, we can chop pop out genes and look at the effect of the development of the embryo without that gene to see what those genes actually do. So it's a sort of understanding how it works. And then in, in future, we could then put in good copies of mutated versions such as the BRCA1 gene, which predisposes people to breast cancer, or genes for cancer, certain types of other cancers, or cystic fibrosis, for example, and put in a healthy version of that gene to help eradicate those diseases. It, uh, sorry, sorry you no, know. you go. Well, I was just going to ask, how do you ensure that everyone's on, this, on the same page in relation to the research they're doing. As I understand, the, the authorities step in at some point. Right. But within, it, there's an awful lot of different universities, different organisations working on things. How do you ensure that someone isn't pushing it further than they're supposed to at this point in time. Well, of course that is concern and that's what's tricky but like I said the UK have a very strong system in place to make sure that all that research is done, the um, human, human fertili fertilization and embry embryology authority um, sort of uh, heavily supervises this and makes sure that everything that is done is, is made public, that it's, uh, it's done within strict guidelines and so Hopefully, if, if people are, are, are supervised in this way, then it's not going to go awry. And, of course, there are going to be potentially commercial companies, corporate companies out there, breaking away, going, we're going to use this research and we're going to d then be charging people for the results. And the point is that we need to keep up with those people and we need the UK to, to be pioneering the, the understanding of it so that we understand what, what could go wrong and what could be going on out there so that we're kind of right at the front of this new, new research. Thank you very much for your time this morning. It's Dr Emily Grassman joining us Thank this you. morning. Thank, Thank you. you.